Spread it like. Okay, welcome back. So the first thing we're going to handle today is making the bricks go away once their health reaches zero. So to do this, you're going to go into your brick health manager script in MonoDevelop. And we already had some uh, pseudocode written for what should happen. So we have um, if the brick health text is less than or equal to zero, and we just kind of wrote destroy brick as a comment. We're going to add something to that. Instead, we're going to set the brick inactive. So we're going to say uh, this dot game object. I don't have to do the this, but I like doing it because it makes things clear to me. Uh, dot set active false, which is going to make it kind of blink out of existence. So if we pop back into Unity, it's going to compile for a second, and then I'm going to hit play, and I'll see my random number of bricks appear. They all have a health of one, and now if I hit, ta-da, it's gone, and it's not even going to collide anymore. So this is already starting to feel more like a game. All right. So now we've got the bricks going away when they're destroyed. Let's create a movement controller so that the bricks move down um, every time that the uh, ball hits the ground. So let's go into Unity in our scripts folder and let's create a new uh, C Sharp script and we'll call this brick movement controller. Go ahead and open this up. Now the way that I did this is I used a state machine on it, uh, just like we did with the uh, with the brick, or not the brick, the ball, so that we knew what state the ball was in at any given time. So the bricks are either moving or stopped. So I'm going to have these two states for them. So I'm going to set my uh, public enum brick state, and then curly braces, enter twice, close curly braces. And my two states are either stop or move. Now, once I create an enum like this, I have to create a reference to the enumerator. So I'm gonna do public brick state, current state. Uh, okay, and then, yeah, so in the start method, I'm gonna say that the current state equals Break state dot stop. So when they first enter, they should be stopped. Then uh, I'm going to say that in here, if current state is equal to double equals because we're checking break state dot move. Then I'm going to move it down one spot and then exactly one unit, and then I'm going to have it uh, turn back to the, um, the stop state. So I'm going to say transform.position is equal to new vector2. I want it to go down one unit, so I'm going to say transform.position.x. So I'm going to have it keep its x position the same. And then transform dot position dot y plus minus one is what I meant to say. Cool. So as soon as it moves into the move state, it's going to move down one. Then I'm going to have it change immediately. Its current state is brick state dot stop. All right, cool. So. Now, what I want to do is make it so that it's uh, changing its brick state once the ball hits the ground. So I'm going to go into my ball controller here. Actually, I can do it. No. Let's see, what were my states in my ball controller again? I've got aim, fire, weight, end shot. So in my end shot state, hmm. OK. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to create a list of the bricks, which is going to hold each of the bricks. So in the game manager, and I want this to be in the game manager because I want it to be something that's always there that's controlling it. If I put this as part of like the brick, bricks turn on and off, which means that it won't always be active. Once a 
object is deactivated. All of its scripts no longer are accessed until it's reactivated by something outside of itself. So I'm going to create a public list of game objects, and I'm going to call it bricks in scene. You can only use a list if you have this using tag up here, um, system.collections.generic. So if a uh, list won't come up for you, it's because you're missing this using tag. All right, and then I'm going to do Moray and I instantiated the bricks. I'm going to not just instantiate them, but also add them to the bricks in the scene. So bricks, oops, in scene dot add. And then I'm going to put all of this in parentheses all the way over there. Okay. And then, do, do, do. I don't know why that moved it over. Bricks in scene dot add. Just going to add this to my list of my bricks all the way over here. Close parentheses. And again, it moved that for I don't know why. Okay, so I'm going to save that. Now, I just want to show you how the lists work here. If I go into Unity, I've got my game manager here. Cool, no errors. If I hit play, I have one, two, three, four, five bricks. Now, if I go over to my game manager, bricks and scene, one, two, three, four, five. So it has these bricks as part of it. So it has a reference to that. Now, in my uh, ball controller here. I'm going to create a reference to the game manager. So we'll say private game manager game manager. It helps if I can spell. In the start method, we're going to finish that reference. So we're going to say game manager equals find object of type. And you can use find object of type because there's only ever going to be one game manager. Cool. Then in the end shot here, I'm going to do game manager dot bricks and scene. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's use a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero i is less than game manager dot bricks in scene and you have to use count instead of length on a list which is a little weird and then we'll go to the next one after we're done with the one that we're on and we're going to say um, game manager dot bricks in scene and we're going to access the eighth one. Oops. I have to do it like this, don't I? Mr. Taft. That git component. And the component I want to get from it is going to be the uh, brick movement controller dot current state equals Brick state, uh, yeah, equals brick movement controller dot brick state dot move. Wow, that's a lot of coding. So, okay, here's what we're doing. So, when the ball's at the end shot, so let's just kind of go through this again, just in case you guys forgot about it. So, when it's in the aims button, I can do uh, mouse clicked, mouse dragged, release mouse. Once I release mouse, then it's going to be in the fire state. And then once it's in the fire state, it's here. But I'm just going to add some code right here just for debugging purposes to say, actually, did I already do that? I was able to go back and forth. <laughs> oh, because in I'll stop. I changed it to aim. So I'm going to change it to wait. And then 
and so that was in the ball stop script you guys so like in the ball stop script we were making it so that once it landed um, we were automatically able to aim again we want to make it so that we're waiting for any other balls to land and then once all the balls land then we can fire stuff out so let's go back into the ball controller and that'll kick it into the wait state and then while it's in the wait state we just want to immediately do current ball state equals ball state dot end shot because we only have one right now we haven't created any extras um, I hope that makes sense so I'm gonna go back in here and now what it should do is once it goes to the end shot phase it should move all the bricks down uh, okay so I'll hit play so there we go I'm referencing something that isn't on there. I didn't give them the I didn't give them the brick can movement controller script. So I'm gonna go to my prefabs here. Just kind of window shade all that stuff. And in my scripts, I'm gonna give brick movement controller to that one. And then I'm gonna give brick movement controller to this one. Uh, okay, cool. So I hit play. Do, do, do. <laughs> okay, so it went down and then did not stop going down. All right, let's fix that. Okay, so I'm sure there's another way to fix this, but this is how we're going to fix it. And we're going to add a Boolean, which is something that's either true or false, uh, up here in, in our brick movement controller to the global variables. And this doesn't need to be accessed by other scripts, so let's just make it private. So private bool. And we'll call it has moved. And this is going to be whether or not the brick has moved. So by default, this is going to be false. But just to make sure, we're going to say has moved equals false. All Booleans start as false, um, but it's nice just to cover your tracks. So what we're going to do up here is we're in our um, update method. And we're going to say if current state is equal to brick state dot uh, stop then we're going to say has moved is false. And if it's already false, that doesn't change anything. In here, inside of our if current state is brick state dot move, we're going to add another if statement. And that if statement is going to check to see whether or not it's moved. So we're going to say if has moved is double equals false, meaning if it hasn't moved yet, then uh, we're going to open a curly brace, and then down here, end a curly brace. As you can see, I kind of already did it. Um, and then we're also going to add another thing that happens. We're not just going to move the position down and change the current state. We're also going to say has moved is equal to true. So it shouldn't access this method again. So what was happening before is it was changing the state to stop, but for some reason it just kept moving. So let's save this, pop back into Unity. Give it a second to think, and we'll hit play. So we've got our uh, bricks forming at the top. If we pull back, it goes away, and they drop down exactly one. So what we want to do is once they drop down one, we want to send a message to the game manager to generate a new row of bricks right here. And then they'll all pop down, new row of bricks. All pop down, new row of bricks. All pop down, new row of bricks. So that's what we're going to move towards. Thank you so much and have a great day.